All right, guys. Uh, hi, Ahmed. Hi, Samaya. Hi, Opiami. Hi, Naima. Hi, Juhan. Hi, Mazed. Hi, Javed. And hi, Nisa. Um, why is the video showing on page? I'm not entirely sure what do you mean by why the video is showing on page, but I believe that it should be showing when you hit the play button and it should be live, right? So it shouldn't be like, you know, a number of minutes. It should be live. Um, Yes, guys. Any other questions? When will it start? It will start in about two to three minutes, approximately. Um, again, we haven't done this for weeks, so there could be a few, you know, technical mishaps on your end. On my end, I think I'm all ready to go. Any other questions, guys, before we get started? I'm going to talk about uh, what we're going to do today um, in two or three minutes when everyone is here. Just waiting on everyone um, to be able to log on and get all the account stuff ready. Looks like Nisa logged on, Sanjita, Javed, Mingmar, Shafin, Juhan, Zana. What book are we doing? Interesting. When will it start? Why is the video showing up? Okay, I'll, I'll answer you guys. I'll answer your questions in just a moment. Okay. All right. I think everyone is logging on. Was that is here? Um, waiting on everyone to log on. Um, so we have what? We have Ahmed, Opiami, we have Mazad, we have Javed, we have Naima, Samaya, Shafin, Juhan, and Nisa. Okay. So still missing a few people, as in Farzana, Sanjita, Typhor. But uh, I guess we can deal with that. All right, guys, looks like we should start now. All right, um, I guess if people come in late, they can rewind and watch from the beginning. Hopefully, they are able to do so. Um, if you do come in late, it's a good idea to put your name in the Q&A box. It can mark you down for attendance, all right? All right, so let's get started. Um, so last week, uh, we kind of took like a week off, right? Um, we were supposed to do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that unfortunately didn't happen. So we're left with a couple options, right? Um, I believe that those of you who attended the Thursday class or something, I believe those who attended the Thursday class after the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday hiatus, um, um, you were able to get some help on the Barron's book, right? So I don't want to completely, you know, just not go over the Barron's book. So what I want to tell you guys is the Barron's book,
we're gonna we're, oh hi Mingmar. Go over perhaps last one to two hours. Right? Today's agenda, which was the original agenda on the schedule, is um is the scrambled paragraph handbook volume one. That's this week. Next week, scramble paragraph handbook, volume two, following week, Following week, we have um, the Namaste, Volume One, and then last but not least, we have Namaste Volume Two. Okay, there are a couple other SHLC books that we are going to go over. There is the S. The TJSSHT and um, SHST book. We're going to go over that later. But it looks like these are what are on schedule for the coming weeks, right, in the coming days. Now, there's a couple things. We didn't go over Barron's in as great detail as I would have liked, right? We, we, we went over Arco in pretty great detail. We went over Kaplan in pretty good, great detail. We, we went over McGraw-Hill in pretty great detail. And Barron's is definitely one of those heavyweights in the industry, right? Barron's definitely is a very solid. A very great, a very accurate um, uh, SHSCT prep book, may I add, right? And I do believe that it's important to, you know, spend a large amount of time on Barron's, right? There are a lot of difficult problems in the Barron's book, especially in the math section, right? And these are problems that one should really work through and be able to understand, and then they can, you know, say that they, you know, at least, you know, are able to complete the books proficiently. Now, I want to keep something in mind, right? Although we are going over the books, I'm slightly concerned that not everyone is paying as much attention as they can, right? Keep in mind that how I want the structure of this class to work is that I want you guys to attend the questions before the session, right? I want you guys to take the time to work through the problems on your own, on your own time without any instruction. Why is that? I want you to encounter those mistakes. And when you encounter those mistakes, I want you to be able to... Um, I want you to be able to understand why you made those mistakes, how you made those mistakes in the online instruction. But in order to understand why and how you made mistakes, you must have made those mistakes in the first place, right? So you must have attempted the problems before. I can't emphasize enough how essential and important it is that you attempt the questions before the session, right? That's the best way to learn, guys. Moving on. Um, and, um, another thing to keep in mind is that we're getting... Hold on. Just give me one second. Okay. So on, another thing to keep in mind is that um we have to be able to you know uh review right review is essential. Once we finish a book, doesn't mean we're done with it, right? I guarantee you, if, we, if someone pulls a dark book and I pull a dark book right now and I give you guys like problems, not all of you will be able to do them, right? You have to review, 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 review. So after we finish session, then review. Guess what? One week from then, when we do the new book, then review. Two weeks from then, then review. You have to review the books. You have to be able to do every single question in the book. Got it? It's not enough just to, you know, just to go over the book in the 12 hours that we do and then just put it on the side. No. Review, review, review. You ideally have to do these books two to three times before you can say that you've mastered all the questions. And in those two to three times, you have to make sure you pay attention to each and every question they don't understand. It is highly essential that you don't, you know, just forego one of the questions because it looks difficult or anything of that nature. You have to be able to do all of the questions. Now today, I'm going to spend the last um, one to two hours going over the parents book, but if anyone has any questions in the McGraw book, or the Arco book, or the Kaplan book, I can pull that out as well, right? You, there, there are answer keys for each of the books, and they do, they do do an okay job, if not 
great job of explaining the question, right? But you have to be able to proactively go through the answer key, make sure you understand the question, and then move on. Got it? You cannot just, you know, just do the books and then, you know, put them on the side for until the test. No. Review, review, review. Review every day, review every week, review every month. Got it, guys? You should be reviewing. Even though we're going to start the Scramble Paragraph Handbook today, you should be reviewing the Barron's book. You should be reviewing the Arca book. You should be reviewing the Kaplan book. You should be reviewing the McGraw book and really making sure that you can undo all of the problems with ease. None of the problems should give you difficulty. It's very important that you must, it's very important that you do review all of your work in the past following weeks. That's the only way to improve. You have to know you can do it by yourself. Just me showing it to you online, via session, or at the center doesn't matter. You have to be able to reassure yourself that, hey, I can do this without anyone. I can do this on my own. And guess what? Why is that important? Because on the test, you can be doing it on your own. All right, guys, if you have any technical difficulties, please use the chat feature. At this time, I'm going to go into the, you know, so. If you have any questions, just use the chat feature, guys. I'm going to start teaching, all right? I'm just making sure that all my comments. Sorry, I'm late. Ah, hi, Tiffer. Sorry, I'm late. Okay, no problem, Tiffer. If there's any questions, guys, use the chat feature. You can use YouTube, whatever it is. Um, those of you who use the YouTube comments, you tend to do everyone a slight disservice by, uh, by, you know, by, um, by doing what? By what am I gonna say? Um, oh, because when you comment, um, it emails everyone. But that's not such a bad problem, I guess. I guess people can do it. Okay, today we're gonna be going over the the scramble paragraph hand handbook volume one. Now, unfortunately, I didn't uh, scan the cover like I usually do, but this is the green one. I did get the I did get the scramble paragraph handbook. Scramble Paragraph Handbook, Volume 1. That's what we're going over today. It is the green one, not the blue one. It is the green one. I mean, I didn't get a Scramble Paragraph Handbook. Well, then just look on today, right? You can get one near the center. We have, like, multiple copies. All right, today, if you don't have the Scrap Pack of Handbook, you should be looking on, but you should be trying to get yourself a copy ASAP, right? Again, keep in mind you have to do all of the books in order to succeed on this test. You have to be able to work through them quite diligently as well. The one we're doing today, I'm just going to pull up a picture just in case anyone, you know, is a little bit confused. Just trying to pull up a picture, guys. Just give me a second. Alright guys, we are doing this one. That one. Got it guys? We are doing that one. Not this one. Not the blue one. That's next week. This one. Let's start. Okay, uh, there's quite a few interesting tips on the right hand side, right? Uh, practice, practice, practice. Yes, guys, that is, they are 100%. I have to agree with your advice. Advice, yes. You have to practice. You have to be able to see the trends. You have to be able to see the transition words. You have to be able to see the pronouns. You have to be able to see the definite articles. These things come with practice. Got it? People can teach you it the first time, but in order to really get better, 
you really have to do some practice. All right, I tried to move the mic a little bit closer, and there should be a little more of that boom effect. But we'll see. All right. Now, so yes, practice, practice, practice. Make sure you do some practice. Always practice. Practice is always great. Okay, moving on. Over here, they give you some examples of how to um, do the work, and they give you things to uh, um, look at. And they, and they do give some really helpful tips. Transition words, right? What are transition words? As in the although, the however, the instead, the although, the however, the instead. And they kind of say, these are relationships between sentences. If one sentence says something and another sentence says pretty much the opposite, obviously a however is going to go between there, right? You have to be able to notice those trends. Repetition, yes, the repetition of names, places, actions. So usually you can tell that in a scramble paragraph, a general trend is let's say you have a two clauses and you have another two clauses. The latter clause of, of, on the first sentence is going to link to the first clause of the next sentence. Moving on, pronouns, yes, right? Oftentimes, um, this or that, right? They're called relative pronouns and they can refer to previous sentences, right? Or subjects in previous sentences, right? Previous sentences, and you have to be able to look out for those. Got it, guys? You have to be able to look out for those. Another thing I didn't really go into. Well, okay, introverts. Yes, the first pizzas, right? We know that when the sentence says the word first, and obviously it's a great thing to um, have. Conclusion words. I like calling these legacy sentences, right? Pretty much um, sentences that give a legacy of what the product is, or who the person is, or what the historical event is. Pretty much give us the historical background and everything of that nature. Basic advice, do these last. Um, I don't know if I'd agree with that. I, I think that's you know really subjective. I think everyone does it differently. Some people do them first. I really don't think there's any special thing about doing them last. Work slowly, obviously, yes, accuracy is important. You don't get partial credit, so mm -hmm. write everything down. Something a lot of you don't do. Writing everything down is like a real benefit. Got it, guys? I don't know why you don't do it, but writing everything, everything down really helps. You make pairs, you underline stuff, you box gum. You box transition words. That's what you do, guys. That's what makes you better. Trust your instincts. Yeah, they make it harder than it is, but it's not really that hard, guys. All right. Now, scramble paragraph test one to twenty. Now, these are fun. We're going to be going over them. Oh, just for a little treat. Let's just try them, right? Let's let's do paragraph one and two. Let's see how we do, right? By ourselves, right? So just put your answer in the Q and A box when you're done. All right. Let's just try these by ourselves. So let's, let's, I'll just do numbers one and two and test one. Let's see how we do. Just when we begin. Obviously, after 100 square paragraphs, we should perform a little bit better. Oh okay, guys, so just do paragraph one and paragraph two. Those of you, those of you who said S Q T U R are great, right? S Q T U R is the correct answer. Good job, right? Let's talk about how we got there. When Yuri Gagarin, Gagarin was a little boy, space travel was just a concept um, found in science fiction. This is kind of focusing on Yuri Gagarin, right? So it's really like a biography type scramble paragraph, and that's always interesting to figure out. And then what? So in a biography type scramble paragraph, we we should be looking at you know what what comes first, as in in terms of you know. In order in his life. So when is the youngest? Well, when he was a young man, suggested this was the first time that you know this is the youngest 
we see Gagarin. So Gagarin began his training to become a cosmonaut, which is the Russian term for astronaut. After S, well, what continues on with the fact he's a, um, he's a cosmonaut? Well, Q. See, as a cosmonaut, you know, over here it says he became a cosmonaut. So here it continues on with his life in saying that, you know, that, um, that we, we, he's as a cosmonaut, Gagarin became the first person, right? And then after S and Q, it says he undertook this voyage in T. What do you think that refers to? Well, it says he's the first person to orbit the Earth. Orbiting the Earth is obviously a voyage. Um, so S, Q, T. And then, surprisingly, he didn't re return inside the Vostok 1. Which one are they talking about? Well, over here, they introduced Vostok 1. We are talking about that machine, or that spacecraft. And then after that, R took the first small step toward transforming space exploration from fiction to reality. Good job. Guys, so those of you who put SQTR, Juhan, uh, Mazad, Ahmed, Opiami, uh, Nisa, uh, Javed, good job. Good job, guys. Uh, let's move on. Let's see the next one, paragraph two. Good job, guys. Those of you who put S Q T U R. Okay, but that says Q-U-T-S-R. Juhan, Q-U-T-S-R. Yep, guys, good job. Q-U-T-S-R is the correct answer. Let's go over why. Time to fast. Okay. So what do we have? We have the legend of El Dorado has ignited the uh, imagination of the explorers from dreamers for century. Q is first. Supposedly made out um, entirely of gold, El Dorado is rumored to span throughout South America and along the Amazon River, right? This is giving you a little more information about El Dorado. It's continuing on from there, right? After Q, we have you. Why? Countless explorers and adventurers stopped at nothing to find this mythical city of gold. What mythical city of gold? Well, take a look. In Q, it pretty much says that supposedly made entirely of gold, El Dorado. So clearly U is too. After that, um, this legend, uh, this legend, well, what legend am I talking about? Here it says, find this mythical city of gold only to lose their lives in the process. This legend for which so many died for, um, partly originates from a tribe in the Andes who would cover their Chief teams with new gold dust. After T, we have S. Um, some explorers also found sub pieces in the Guadavita where the natives, the natives had thrown their valuables to feast the gods. What is this referring to? Well, in in T, it's talking about the tribe in the Andes who would cover their chieftains with the gold dust. And then after that, R says, it is no wonder that El Dorado is now used, now used. That's the legacy sentence, guys. Now used, right? And that's why it should be last. Fifth. Good job, Opiami. Good job, Ahmed. Good job, Naima. Good job, everyone. <laughs> All right, guys. Moving right along, right? Let's do paragraph three by ourselves. Let's do it. Come on, guys. I'm just going to clean out the common box so it's a little bit cleaner.
Right, I've, I've cleaned up the con box. When you're done, put it in your answer for paragraph three. Okay, you've got S Q T U R. Okay, that's a possibility. Paragraph three, Q R U T S. Okay, Java says Q R U T S. The chat guys looks like everyone has Q R U T S. That was before. Haha, <laughs> news hot. All right. Looks like everyone has Q R U T S. Looks like everyone has Q R U T S for paragraph three. So let's try to work on paragraph. Okay. Looks like everyone has Q R U T S. Q R U T S is the correct answer, guys. Good job. All right. Um. Here it says uh, the beautiful but poison lionfish has caused extensive damage to Florida's delicate marine ecosystem. Now the idea is that Q um, starts giving an example. All right, Q starts giving an example. Good job, Shafin, with paragraph four already. Right? Um, Q starts giving an example when Hurricane Andrew struck six lionfish escaped from the Pacific and Indian Oceans and found their way into the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Right? If that's first, even if you don't put that first, you can put that on the side. Right? But you know that R has to come after Q. Why? R and Q are a pair. These fish multiply. What fish? The six lions fish that escaped, right? And the threatening predators to threaten them have been attacking whole species of marine life ever since. Among their prey, who is there? Well, there are six lion fish, the fish that multiplied. And how do you know they have prey? Because they have been attacking whole species. Among their prey are herbivores, so we know that that's two, that's three. Um, found in commercial fisheries that's helped sustain coral reefs by consuming excess seaweed. After you, we have tea. As a result, they continue to try to not only the commercial eco uh, fishing industry, but also add the ecological balance of the of this ecosystem. And that's pretty much what it says you here, because this is herbivores found in commercial fisheries, right? So it hurts them, it hurts the commercial fisheries, and it also hurts the well, the coral reefs, whatever. So there you go. Today suggests a legacy sentence as it should come last. So today, scientists and local environmentalists are searching for ways to control the lionfish population and return order to the waters. Return order to the waters, as in take it back to the way before these six lionfish fish came around. Right. So that's where you're gonna have Q R U T S. Good job. Good job, Juhan, Mazad, Naima, Ahmad, and Javid. All right, guys, let's move on. Paragraph four. Um, I believe Shafin has already blurred out the answer, so let's quickly go over it. An orchestra conductor's job is far more involved than one realizes, right? R is first. For example, it gives an example of how an uh, orchestra conductor's job is far more involved than people think. So the conductor is usually responsible for recruiting and hiring performers to build a strong orchestra. So after we talk about one job, we can talk about another responsibility, which is um, new. Another important job, so one important job is just recruiting and hiring performers. Another important job is to choose the work that will be performed by the orchestra that season. After you, we can have T. The, the conductor must then study these selected pieces. What are these selected pieces? Well, these selected pieces refer to new, the choosing the works. The works are the selected pieces. It's the works that are the selected pieces over here. So I don't see that's the link between U and T. You know, R is first, then U, then T. And then what? Well, let's take a look. Uh, finally, now usually finally denotes the last sentence, right? But it's not a last sentence here. Why is it not a last sentence here? Because all of these elements come together 
is in queue. And finally, it gives you another element, right, of the performance. It gives you the whole controlling the tempo, dynamics, and time he's performing using precise arm movements. It says he has to do this also. So this is another responsibility he has to do. And that's why F is fourth, and Q comes after S, right? Not just, just because S is finally doesn't make it last size. Got it? Q says all of these, all these elements come together. What, what elements? Well, there's elements mentioned in F, there's elements mentioned in U, there's elements mentioned in T, there's elements mentioned in R. Good job, guys. All right. Shafin says, U, R, T, S, Q is the last sentence. Okay. U, T, S, Q, R, paragraph 5. I see some debate. U, T, S, Q, R. Let's go over it. Okay. The FIFA World Cup is the most popular sporting event in the world, right? Well, let's take a look. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, this event, this event refers to what? Well, it says the FIFA World Cup is the most popular sporting event. So obviously this event, um, you should be first, it refers back to that FIFA World Cup event. This event brings the world's best soccer teams together to compete against each other for the title of world champion. After you, then we can put, you know, T. Why are we putting T? Origins. We're talking about like a phenomenon, like more of an invention type spam paragraph, right? So we should be talking about the early origins, the first time it has happened. Right? So T, the first official World Cup, took place in Uruguay in 1930 and has since been held every four years of different location on the globe. Now, well, what would come, what would be good after that? Ask why? Only 30 teams participated in that first tournament. What first tournament? In T, they mentioned the first official um, World Cup, right? So that's why S makes sense after T. After S, it says only eight of these teams. Which teams? Well, only 13 teams participate in that first tournament, but nowadays a uh, total of 32 teams compete. Got it? And out of those 32 teams, only 8 of those teams in Q have actually won. And then 5 would be R, in addition to fostering competitive spirit, the World Cup unites disparate nations by promoting fair play and global mutual respect. So kind of adding on to the fact that, you know, that it's not just about soccer. Got it, guys? UTSQR is a nice... Uh, Sentence. We did this already in the Scram Paragraph Bootcamp. Uh, Typhoor, you are correct. Oh, Typhoor, congrats on being part of the Google Q&A. Um, Alright, guys. Uh, paragraph 2, let's do it. Well, let's do test 2, Paragraph 1. Uh, Javid, uh, it's not going to be TU because... Um, because you and you, this event doesn't talk about the first official World Cup. The you, the first, this event in the um, is not equal to the first official World Cup, right? Javed, keep that in mind. Why is it not equal to the first official World Cup? Because this event brings the world's best soccer teams together to compete against each other for the title of world champion. It kind of suggests it's a recurring event rather than one specific event that happened in the past. You refers to the event in the in the topic sentence, not T. Okay, paragraph one. I think that says S R U Q T. Good for everyone else. Java also. All right, Naima says S R U Q T. Juhan got S R U Q T.
Mad God, S R U Q T. Good job, guys. The correct answer is S R U Q T. All right, let's let's take a look at why. So we know why. Ants have an astonishing ability to communicate with their colonies through chemical release, right? So, well, you kind of have to think about this, right? So we know what this type of communication. This type of communication refers to what the ability to communicate with colonies through chemical release. This is called chemoreception. Now let's come talk about chemoreception. Where does it talk about chemoreception? Two, it says chemoreception is a process. So it's introducing what chemoreception is all about, elaborating what it's about. So chemoreception is a process by which ants secrete chemicals um, called pheromones that leave off an aroma that other ants can detect. So after S and R, we can have U. In doing so, in doing what? They secrete chemicals, secreting chemicals that leave off an aroma. They leave behind a pheromone trail. Well, clearly over here, they're just dropping pheromones. So S, R, U. And then what? Well, um, that enables ants to retrace their steps and allows others from the colony to follow the lead. After you, what can we put? Animals use this scent to identify members of their own. Well, what scent are we talking about? Well, the scent that's talked about this pheromone trail. And after that, five the, depends on effective and orderly systems such as this communication method. Got it? So, a good legacy sentence, summing it up, summing up why, you know, summing up the information that's stated in the passage. Okay, QSUTR, paragraph two. Juhan says that. Okay, paragraph 2, QSUTR, QSUTR. Good job, guys. Good job. So, this, these are easy. Viruses are microscopic organisms that attach themselves to cells and infect the body through a process called, called the lytic cycle. Right? Now, paragraph. So, what can we have as first? Well, Q is going to be first. Why? Each virus, I'm referring back to the viruses, is made of a set of genetic, uh, genetic constructions called nucleic acids. After Q, then we can have S. Why? Because Coats of protein not only protect the acids, the acids are what? The nucleic acids. Everyone sees that? Um, but also allow them to feel and recognize the whole cell. After Q and S, we can have U. Why? A lipid membrane that surrounds the protein. What is the protein referring to? The coats of protein. Is used to attach the virus to the whole cell. After you, what can we have? The virus then infiltrates the whole cell. So after the virus is attached to the whole cell, the virus can infiltrate the whole cell. And then, once the host is infected, well, obviously when the virus in infiltrates the whole cell, the host is eventually going to be infected, and leaving us to have the answer choice Q, S, U, T, R. Good job, Imran, Ahmed. Good job, Juhan. Good job, Mazad. Good job, Sanjita. Good job, Nisa. Good job, Javed. Good job, Shafin. All right, let's move on, guys.
Okay. Let's see if we have answers Q S U R T. Q S U R T Q S U T R. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. So Anne Anna Mar Mary Robertson, also known as Grand Moses, began her painting career at the age of seventy six. Q sold his first because she sold her first paintings, right? This is when she started, obviously. It doesn't say she learned art or whatever. So she sold her first paintings at a local county fair and displayed others at a local drugstore. After Q was asked, one day vacationing art dealer Lewis Calder stepped into the drugstore and bought up her entire collection. The drugstore. What drugstore? The drugstore where she displayed her stuff, the local drugstore. So S is second. After S is you. Calder, who is Calder? Calder, Lewis Calder. Lewis Calder is introduced in S and is referenced in you. Calder showcased her works in an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. After you, what can we say? Well, after you, we're going to have T. She remains one of the most uh, uh, African, um, she remains one of the most uh, famous American folk artists of the 20th century. Versus, let's take a look at another one. Afterwards, Ganra Moses became a household name and went over to produce 1,000 works before her um, death. Right? Now, let's take a look. You see over here, Afterwards, Grand Moses became a household name. Well, after what? After Calder showcased her works, right? So it makes sense that R would be fourth and T would be fifth. She remains one of the most famous folk artists in the 20th century. Suggests a nice legacy sentence. Got it, guys? Pretty much um, illustrating her legacy in the final years of her life. Got it, guys? Q, S, U, R, T is the correct answer. Let's move on. Paragraph 4. TRSCQ, 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 good job guys, TRSCQ is correct. Alright, so that looks good. Let's just go on to paragraph 5, let me know if you have any problems with paragraph 4.
5, S0KU, S0KU, S0KU. Getting on a few more other people. SGRQ, SGRQ. All right, good job, guys. Um, those of you who have trouble, we're moving a little bit quicker because I've just realized that there are a couple more questions than initially had there were. So, again, if you're moving quicker, please ask questions, but SGRQ, paragraph 5 is correct. All right, guys, we should be working in paragraph five, right? SGRQU, good job. It looks like a lot of people at SGRQU. Good job, guys. All right, Ahmed, Juhan, Naima. I don't think he said put that for paragraph five. But. All right, good job. From those of you, I expect Java to participate, Typhoon to participate, Nisa to participate, guys, and Jira to participate. Oh, so you did participate. Yeah, guys, no one should get lost in the mix. Let's do number one. All right, let me just clean out the. All right, I'm cleaning out the thing. You guys should be working on paragraph one and paragraph two, right? Come on, guys, let's get it done. All right, guys, let's get it done. Just cleaned out the. One, SRUQT, SRUQT, waiting on a few other people. All right, looks like we have a mad. Sanjita, Juhan, Shafin, SRUQT, good job, guys. SRUQT is correct. Let's move on to paragraph two.
Okay, one after you QT looks like that's his top is paragraph two. Drew Hannes and Jindita have very similar answers. RQSTU. Okay, Javid, um, Imran, RQSC, all right. Keep going, guys. Right, Javid thinks it's RS2UQ, so let's, let's go over paragraph two. Okay, so we have domestic pigs um, become feral when released into the wild, right? So let's take a look. So you said R was first, right? Um, R is first because once in a while the pigs, the pigs referring to the domestic pigs, um, must adapt to the new surroundings in order to survive, right? So after R, so we have R first, right? Now after R, what, what can we put? Well, let's, let's take a look. This ability to change characteristics based on environment. What ability to change characteristics based on environment? Well, in R it says they must adapt to their new surroundings. So that's the ability to change characteristics based on environment. It's called phenotypic plasticity. Good. After R and Q. What do we want to put after R and Q? One new characteristic is dense, coarser, and longer hair than the lens itself. So this is one new characteristic that's talked about in changing characteristics, right? That's one type of phenotypic plasticity. So that's S. Now that's um, that uh, gives an extra layer of protection for the pigs, right? Now T says the swine also grow tusks. As in on top of this long coarser hair, they also grow tusks, right? So here's another example. And you, you know that U comes last versus T because as the changes are complete and the feral pig bears the resemblance to us to count for. Got it? This is RQSD. Good job, guys. Paragraph two is RQSD. Those of you have said so. Move on. Let's do paragraph three. Okay, name says paragraph three is U T R S Q. Juhan also, Matt also. Good job, but also, all right, good job, guys. Paragraph three is U-T-R-S-Q. Let's move on. Paragraph four. Good job, Sanjita. Good job, David. Good job, Naima. Good job, Juhan. Good job, Ahmed. Good job, I said. All right, guys, let's let's keep on. Let's keep moving. Let's do a uh, paragraph four. Good job, Nisa. Okay, Juhan says Q U R T S. Sanjeev says Q U. Juhan says Q U T R S, and Sanjeev says Q U R T S. So let's just quickly go over that one, right? 
Benjamin Banneker was an African American astronomer, surveyor, and uh, just give me a second, guys. Something just popped up. Let me just close it really quickly. All right. So let's take a look. Um, Benjamin Banneker was an African astronomer, uh, surveyor, and mathematician. Right now, okay. Well, we know here um, we should. Uh, this is getting a biography type kind of paragraph, so we should be talking about earlier years. But it doesn't really say that. It doesn't really say, you know, it doesn't really say anything about his earlier years. So we can talk in terms of parallelism. So we, we can talk about how he's an astronomer first, maybe then a server, then a mathematician. Q. His ast astronomical abilities were such that he correctly predicted the time and date of a solar eclipse. After Q, we can talk about his surveying career, which is. On Mew. The serving career came about when George Washington appointed Banneker to a committee that mapped the boundaries of Washington, D.C. After Q and U, then we can, um, we can well, well, then we have a couple options, right? So we, have, we, we can have R. Why? Because he says over here he mapped the boundaries of Washington, D.C. He can, now he's continuing on, right? He went, he later, after he did the surveying, after the astronomical ability thing, he later went on to, you know, Create the farmer's al almanac. And whoa, I saw farmer's almanac sometime before. And T, it says naturally Banneker ca um, calculated all the information included in the almanac himself. So he did everything in the almanac himself. What almanac are we talking about? Well, in R, they introduced the farmer's almanac, right? Almanac. So I don't know how to pronounce it. So we have T, and then we have S. The son of a former slave also left a stamp on American history. Um, using great intellect to for some of the earliest um, arguments against slavery. Another thing he did, a great legacy sentence. Five works beautifully. Good job, class. Well, R S works beautifully. Okay, moving on. Paragraph five. Let's do it. Yep, Q U R two S Juhan worked a little bit too quickly. And then Mazad, good job. All right, guys, let's do let's do paragraph five. Come on. All right, looks like we have UQRTS, Ahmed, Juhan, Naima, Mazad. Good job, guys. And Sanjita. Can't forget Sanjita. All right, yep, UQRTS is the correct answer. Looks like we have no debate there, guys. Javed, people like you should get in on this, right? Everyone else. I don't think Lowen is here today. I think he's like out of state or something. Uh, Mingmar was here. Where's Mingmar, guys? Mingmar should be involved. Let's move on to paragraph one. We're going to take a short break at 12.30. And we're probably gonna take another one at um two. Right? So I give you guys a break every one and a half hours. Alright, let's move on to paragraph one of test four.
Okay, uh, St. Jesus is Q S R U T. Q S R U T. Okay, and then we have Java who thinks it's Q U T S R. Do do not make much of turns on these on. Well, we'll see. And then we have Chu Han who thinks it's Q S R R U T. And Chafin says Q S U R T. Okay, so let's go over this. Seems like there's some debate, right? So, so, so let's go over it. The South African stiletto snake is known for its strange features and clever hunting techniques, right? So we have a couple of interesting options here. Its name refer so this is that's a good first sentence because it refers to the South African stiletto. Um refers to snake's thin fangs that resemble stiletto blades, right? After Q, we can put S. The fangs. What fangs? Well, the is a definite article, so referring to something specific, which are the thin fangs. The fangs are retractable, and since their mouth muscles push them forward, they do not need to open their mouths to attack. So we know that S should come second. After S, once, um, well, now we have these other three letters, right? Let's try to build a pair. So let's take a look. Um, uh, well, we have you once a target is spotted, the snake rises from its underground layer to mount an attack. Well, over here, you can see that um, U, U leads to T because it says underground layer to mount an attack, and then it says biting its prey. See that? And then it says the snake's fangs return to their horizontal position um, until the a snake needs to eat, right? But if we take a look, um, but what else do we have? We have R. This flexibility is useful for the reptile to covertly attack from the um, from the underground. Well, there's a couple there's, there's, there's a couple ideas we can use here. Um, the first thing is that over here, um, we can have you first. Once the target is spotted, so it gives the example for when you know when when they're about to attack, a snake rises from the underground. Then what? This flexibility is useful for the reptile to covertly attack. So in R, we are covertly attacking, and then T, after biting its prey. Got it? So U says it's about to mount an attack, R says it's covertly attacking, and then T says after biting its prey. Right? Everyone sees that? So that's what's going to be Q, S, U, R, T. Paragraph 2, let's do it. Okay, so two Q T U S R Q T U S R Q T U S R Q T U S R. Good job, Javits and Jida Naima Juhan. 
All right, guys, let's move it on. Let's move on to paragraph three. Okay, it looks like we have QTUSR, QTUSR, QTUSR. Good job, guys. Let's move on. It's to paragraph four, guys. Come on. Okay, looks like for paragraph three, we have RUSTQ. Good job, Juhan. RUSTQ, Sanjita, RUSTQ. Javed, good job. And the name uh, misspelled should be RUSTQ, not RUSDR name. Uh. Good job, RSQ, Ahmed. All right, guys, looks good. Let's move on to paragraph four.
Okay, Nameless is after you, GQ. How about everyone else, guys? Come on. Okay, SRUTQ, SRUTQ, I'm mad. Juhan, I'm better run out, guys, come on. Job Mazad, Job Shafin. All right, paragraph five. Juhana has already declared to be RTSUQ. Everyone else? Okay, paragraph five. RTSEQ, good job, Nisa. All right, guys, looks like we're going to take a short break. All right, let's take a break from 12.33 to 12.47. Why not? Got a guy's break until 12.47. Get a breather, get some water, maybe look out the window, eat something, whatever it is, guys, take a snack. Got it? You need something to, you know, tide you over. Good job, Typher, on paragraph five, right? You need something to tide you over. So maybe get a snack. You might be bored. Maybe do some, I don't know, jumping jacks or whatever makes you excited. Got it, guys? Take a break until 1247. All right? Keep the, keep the window on. Keep the window open. Keep all those stuff. We'll just continue 1247. RTSQ, good job, Naima. Good job, Ahmad. Good, really good job, Kefir.
Alright guys, alright guys, looks like Juhan is back. Let me know when you're back by putting your name in the Q&A. It's 1247 guys, come on. I just mean, yep. Okay, I'm mad. They first and Gita just need yeah, I mean, Okay, guys, let's get back to work, right? All right, so that's what we have to do. Um, test five, I believe. Yep, test five. 
All right, let's do paragraph one, guys. Come on. Hi, Naima. All right, Q R S U T looks like a popular answer. Just name Javits and Jita. All right, guys, more people, come on. All right, good job, guys. Q R S U T is the correct answer. Paragraph two, let's do it. You guys come paragraph two. Good job, Javid. S T R Q U. Who else? I right, looks like we should go over paragraph two, guys. Let's go over it. So we have the Mexican revolutionary Francisco Pancho Villa. Um, was born to poverty in the state of um, my tablet fell asleep. All right, guys, let's do paragraph two. So we have the Mexican revolutionary Francisco Pancho Villa was born to poverty in the state of Chihuahua, right? So now let's see what we should put first. Well, he later became an icon later after then what? So we don't really get a – we want like an earlier – the earliest days. Um, so this is really based on Francisco Pancho Villa. Well, take a look. It says he was born to poverty in the state of Chihuahua. So that's obviously, you know, his earlier years. After that – Let's see um, where where we can really go from there, right? Um, let's take a look. He later became an icon of the Mexican Revolution, spending so much time on horseback. Well, why would he be spending time on horseback? We're not entirely sure about that. Um, R, thanks to Gonzalez. Um, Gonzalez, who is Gonzalez? Right, so that, that doesn't necessarily work either. Um, but um, guess what? I believe, yeah, T says what? A local political figure named Abraham Gonzalez educated Villa about the government's power to affect the lives of the people. So if you take a look, T must come before R because R references that Gonzalez guy, right? So Gonzalez teaches them how government affects the lives of people, and then R, and then Villa uses that knowledge probably in fights for human rights. So we know that T and R are a pair. 
right? Now take a look. We also know what? We also know that you must be the last sentence, right? You must be the last sentence because it says he retains the iconic status in Mexican history. So you must be the last sentence, right? Now let's take a look at everything else. Um, okay, well, as these circumstances led him to a career as a bandit before meeting a man who would change his life. Well, we know a man who would change his life, the local political figure named Abraham Gonzalez. So obviously, as introduces that a man is going to change his life, and then T gives us that man. So as comes before T and R. So now we have three and one. Now let's take a look at where Q goes. He later became an icon of the Mexican Revolution, spending so much time on horseback that he became known as center of the north. So we know what? We know that in R that he is he dedicated himself to fighting for human rights, and then he became an icon of the Mexican Revolution, obviously after being reformed by that Gonzalez guy. So Q is going to go right there. Got it, guys? S T R Q U. you. SQTUR paragraph 3, Ahmed. Good job. SQTUR Juhan, good job. Good job, Ahmed. All right, let's continue, guys. Come on. Paragraph three. Uh, we have Ahmed saying that it's SQTUR who agrees, who disagrees, guys. Come on. By three, we got S Q T U R. Okay. S Q T U R. All right, good job, guys. Three is S Q T U R. Good job. If you need help on it, please let me know. Now, let's move on to paragraph four then. Okay, now you must ask Q S R T U for paragraph four. Okay, and so does Rafine, Q S R T U. Who is RTU? Paragraph 4. Yep, good job, guys. Paragraph 4 is QSRTU. Let's move on to paragraph 5 then.
Yep, good job, guys. Four is uh, QSR to you. Let's move on to five. Five, Mazed is QUTSR, according to Sinjita and Mazed. Good job, both of you. All right, those of you who have, um, I feel like we're going to a pretty quick pace now, right? So those of you who have done paragraph four, move on to paragraph five, make sure you get the QUTSR, right? Um, those of you who are still on paragraph three, move on to paragraph four, make sure you get QSR to you and paragraph five. Q U T S R. Let me know if you don't, and then we can move on to the next test, which is going to be test six. Good job, Matt. Good job, Juhan. Good job, Naima. Good job, Sanjita. Good job, Mazad. Okay, one. All right, guys. Let's do paragraph six, number one, guys. Come on. UQRTS. Okay, let's go over it. Matt says UQRST. So we have the Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. It's part of the Himalayan mountain range, right? So you goes first again, talking about the etymology of the name, right? Where it comes from, what it means. It's after you. We can say then it was renamed, right? So after we talk about the original name, we can talk about the rename, right? So UQ. After Q, um, well, what does Q say? When British surveyor George Everest was the first to measure the mountain, right? After Q, we can have R, right? So R says, you know, how there's new measurements being made, as technology improved geographers um, and mountaineers petitioned for the mountain to be measured a second time. What? Well, mount, mount, they, they, they petitioned for the mountain to be measured a second time. Well, over here, you know that Q says it's measured for the first time, right? So it, it goes very well, U, Q, R. After U, Q, and R, toss, toss, as in because of the petition of, you know, the the mountain measured a second time, the mountain was re actually remeasured a second time, right? Actually measured the second time and, or remeasured. And then these new measurements, as in the measurements from the second time, is going to be QRST. Good job. I'm just going to clean the box so everyone knows who's doing what. Good job, UQRST. I'm going to say good job.
Good job, guys. Let's, let's move on to paragraph two, right? Come on. Guys, this is working in paragraph two. Difficult to clean the box, but it's the best of my ability. Okay, this name says TRQS2. Okay, who else? TRQSU, TRQSU, TRQSU. Good job, guys. All right, paragraph three. Let's do it. All right, let's quickly go over it. Juhan says TRSQU. So, during the age of exploration, um, Spain sent con conquistadors to explore new lands and claim them for the country. Right? Okay. So, all right. So now let's take a look. So, T. One such conqueror, as an example of one of the conquistadors that uh, that are set up, set up to explore new lands, right? Um, Ponce de Leon explored Florida and the adjacent Caribbean islands, right? So after T, what do we want to have to say? Um, what do you want to say? R. Why? Why is R after T? After saying who's going to come in secondary New York? Leon. Who is Leon? It's referring to Ponce de Leon that's mentioned in T, right? After T and R. Well, what does what does R say? Leon decided to set out on his, on his own when they returned to Spain. He landed on the island of Puerto Rico. Right, so after you know, he thinks he's traveling to Spain, but he lands on the island of Puerto Rico and finally the first summon, which is bestowed the title of governor. After Q, you have S. After two years, a new governor. So over here, we we um we, we see Leon is best at the title of governor, and now there's a new governor two years later. After that, um, you this would be Leon's last journey for the native clues. The people attacked him. It was the cost of his life, and that again is the. Nice closing sentence because it tells us that that's his last journey and that's his legacy. Got it, guys. Not T R S Q U, it's T R Q S U. With T R Q S U, not T S Q R U, Juhan. <laughs> Let's do paragraph three.
Good job. Good job, Naima. RQSUT. Good job, Ahmed. Good job, Tasneem. Yep, Juhan. Just not too many, but one too many. All right. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. Good job, Sanjeet, on TRQSU. All right. Those who don't paragraph three, let's move on to paragraph four. QTUSR, good job, good job, good job, Mazad, good job, Opiami. All right, good job, Misad. Everyone's coming back. All right. Um, when are we doing the balance? And when can we do the ninth grade section in the back, please? Ah, we can do that. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, perhaps, probably tomorrow. If you guys want to go back to the balance, looks like we're more than on schedule to finish um this grand paragraphs handbook um quicker than I presume. Tomorrow, um, I'm going to do a brief review over all the questions in the books, probably, right? I'm probably going to do McGraw-Hill, Kaplan, Barron's, right? And we can definitely do the ninth grade section of the Barron's also then, right? So I think tomorrow it's a good idea to, you know, review all the books that we have done for the past couple of weeks, right? So tomorrow would be a good time to do the Barron's and the ninth grade section. Now, paragraph 5. Paragraph four, people got QTUSR, good job. QTUSR is correct. All right, guys, let's move on to paragraph five. TQ, TUQRS, good job, Tasneem, good job, Naima, good job, Mazed. All right. Ah, you changed your answer, Tasneem. All right, good job. Looks good. 
Let's move on. Let's move on to test seven. Good job. Paragraph five. Q U R T S. Not quite. Let's go over it. Let's go to paragraph five and test six really quickly. All right, so we have the most famous of ancient Egyptian pyramids is Khufu's Grand Pyramid, right? Uh, Great Pyramid of Giza. So let's let's take a look at what could be first. Um, it is listed uh, standing for it was the tallest tower in the world. Okay, um, for size. All right, so if you take a look, T goes before U. Even though U sounds great and U is describing the ancient um, Great Egyptian pyramids, T introduces that. It says it's known for its size as well as architectural genius, and its size is elaborated in U. Everyone sees that, so we see that T and U are a pair. After that, um, we can say, well, Q and R are pair because Q says it was really difficult. It was a lot of work. And then R gives an example of how it was a lot of work, right? So three and four. And then five is uh, S is a good legacy. This amazing structure continues to draw triggers. Good legacy sentence. Okay, this an email is a typo. All right, guys, moving on. Let's do test seven. Q R S U T Q S Q T R S U. Okay, guys, let's cover it. Q R S U T is good, but Q R S U T is good. Good job, Juhan. Q R S U T is good. Um, let's quickly go over that. It kind of switched it up. Uh, uh, so far, no one. I don't think it's made a mistake actually. So QRSUT, 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 good job. QRSUT, good job. All right. So if we're done with that one, let's move on to number two. Okay, Matt says U Q R S T. 
Mazas is UQRST. Good job, Nisa, number one. UQRST in your notes, guys. Come on. Good job, BQRST. Good job. Good job, Juhan. Good job, Sushinjita. Good job, Tasneem. Good job, Opayami. Yep, BQRST is right, guys. Getting better at these kind of paragraphs, right? I feel like you guys are getting them all right. Paragraph three, let's do it. All right, I'm at R-U-T-S-Q. Good job. Good job, I'm at. Good job, Kasneem. Good job, Juhan. Good job, I'm at. Three, T-S-R-U-Q. We should go over that. All right, let's quickly go over that. All right, so number three. Um, although the leafy sea dragon is named for a mythical creature, it is a genuine uh, uh, aquatic creature. Okay, so this one kind of dispels the legend, right? Saying that it's not, it's not, it was named for a mythical creature, it's actually a genuine creature, right? So after um, the topic says, take a look. Nevertheless, the leafy sea dragon is on the near. Okay, so we don't know why I've been the nearest friend species, less than strong, but listen to that. Or, while it does bear slight resemblance to dragons, that's interesting, that kind of gives like a nod to the fact that it's named for a mythical creature, right? It is actually a species of seahorse. And that elaborates on the idea that it's actually a genuine and quick creature. So that's what R makes such a good first sentence. After R, we say U, also known as Australian seahorse. So now it's more specific after an R mentioned it's a type of sea seahorse. You go it's more specific by saying it's an Australian seahorse. This seahorse creature can only be found on the western shoreline of, um, of Australia. Okay, that's interesting. S says these appendages, and in T it introduces appendages. Everyone sees that? It has orange, green, and gold appendages, and S refers to those appendages. So S and T and S are a pair. So we know that R goes first, then U. Right? So, and we know T and S are a pair. And then guess what? At the end of S it says these appendages provide the seahorse with an ex excellent source of camouflage. And it says the never the nest, like regardless, um, the leafy sea dragon is on the near to species list. So how does that make sense of the transition? Well, in S, it says what? It says that 
Um, they have an excellent source of camouflage, so you would think that they'd be able to hide from their predators, but not quite. They're still in the near threatened species, so we know TSQ. So it's going to be R U T S Q. Got it, guys? All right. What test will we end at? Um, honestly, I would be happy ending at five because we do this over four days, but we're already on seven, so we're probably going to end at ten. Or TRSUQ, that's a good one, yep. Name it actually disturbs me to March Ram Paragus. I feel like it messes me up more, although you say the software does not help me much. Um, well, you don't have to mark them up like I do, but I believe that people generally find it helpful that, let's say you find a pair. Let's say you find that R and Q or a pair, or S or Q or a pair. It's generally helpful to write that down, you know, like on the side, like S, Q, just so you know that that's a pair, right? You don't have to mark it up and box it and underline it like how I do it, but you can usually, you know, write down your letters. That's usually how I think people, you know, better comprehend it, more so than ordering it one, two, three, four, five. Just write down, you know, your pairs on the side. You don't have to underline a box like I do. Paragraph four, TRSUQ. Good job, Juhan. Who else? Paragraph five, Naima says SRQUT. Let's go over that really quickly. So, we have what? The Supreme Court is the head of the United States ju judicial branch, right? So, uh, let's take a look. The Congress created the court. So, it talks about its origins, right? So, we have Congress created the court. The Supreme Court is the head of the United States judicial branch. So, the Congress created the court to interpret whether or not certain laws should be in place. So, S is first. After S, it can also decide if a uh, president or any level of um, government is acting in an unconstitutional manner. So you see that also? So that means that it, it can decide something else, right? And in S it says, guess what? That they can interpret whether or not certain laws should be in place. So that's one thing. And then R says also, so that's another thing, right? So we have SR. Then after SR, let's take a look. Um, uh, well, what do we have? We know what. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting. It says oversee these cases. These cases, well, it says in Q that um, that the Supreme Court rules on approximately 150 cases. So we know that Q and T are a pair, right? And then U says the rulings are final and there's no court in the country that will hear further appeal. So if we can talk about the rulings are final, it's going to be S, R, Q, T, U. Yeah, I do that, but the way you do it is confusing, and I feel claustrophobic of my work if I do it the way you do it. Claustrophobic of your work. Okay. Um, although I understand why I do it because you're the one explaining. Um, that's an interesting. That's an interesting point. Um, I think that yeah, I guess that sometimes maybe that the boxing and underlining could really, you know, um, really, uh, I don't know, like, like, I don't know, make it messy. I guess, and I guess people like clean paragraphs more so than the messiness, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, sometimes it's helpful to underline your transition words when you're going back and checking, you know, to make sure it's good. I think at the same time, at the very least, it's very helpful to write down your pairs when you make them, just so you don't forget them. But I guess, you know, I guess people have different, you know, methods and people have different techniques, so whatever works for you, you should do. Uh, so QTU is the correct answer, guys. SRQ to you, paragraph 5. SRQ to you, paragraph 5. Good job.
All right, guys, that's test seven. Let's move on to test eight. All right, Juhan says Q S R U T for number one. Who agrees? Who disagrees? Guys, come on. All right, QSRT, QSRT, good job. Guys, some more people, guys, come on, job it, everyone else, guys, come on, get in on this. All right, Naima says the next one is QURTS. All right, guys, let's move on. Right, um, let's take a look. 
Paragraph 2, let's do it. The platypus is an unusual animal, unusual animal because of its appearance and its physical traits, right? Okay. So, well, what do we have? Um, all these features allow other significant traits. For example, this, the platypus one of the few venomous. Okay. This idea, um, well, okay, well, we can start with Q. One of its most significant qualities. Um, is that it lays eggs rather than gives birth. I feel like that would um, give it enough, you know, um, that introduces one of the first, you know, significant qualities, right? Uh, let's take a look. Um, would that be good there? Um, yeah, okay. So after that, well, after I got some of the thing, after I introduced a few significant qualities, we can talk about other significant qualities, right? Um, traits include web feet, duck like bill, and a beaver like tail, right? And then we can reference this, these features and these features by saying all of these features, right, which refers to Q and U, which is going to be three. A lot of platypus nav navigate on land as well as underwater. So after you have Q, U, and R, well, after you talk about that, we can say the platypus is also, so after you talk about all the features, you can say that it's also one of the few venomous animals in existence. And that would suggest uh, T. And then, for example, male platypuses have spurs looking the hind feet that inject venom, right? So it gives an example of T, so you know that T and S are a pair. Got it, guys? Q-U-R-T-S. Good job. All right, guys, let's move on. Paragraph 3. Okay, guys, paragraph three, guys, come on. Wait, Naeem, what about boot camp? Um, boot camp is definitely not going to be today. Um, 
I am looking to see when I can um, put in the boot camp. Um, it could be tomorrow. Right? I'll let you know in your accounts within an hour after the session ends. Why are you nature calls? Okay, R Q S R S T U Q R S T Q U. Okay, let's take a look. Um, R U T S Q R U T S Q R U T S Q R U T S Q. Good job, guys. Move on. Okay, RSTQU is good for four. Who else, guys? Come on. Two R U T S for par for paragraph five. Good job. R S T Q U paragraph four. Good job, Druhan. Good job, Ahmed. Good job, Mazad. All right, guys. Let's move on to test nine. Test nine is the last test that. No, test ten. No, one to nine is nine. So, test nine. Let's do test nine, guys. All right, ready? Paragraph one. Paragraph five. Q T R U S. Good job. Good job, Sanjita. Good job, Java. Let's move on. Test nine.
Due to URS, due to USR. All right, guys, let's do the first one. The first records of prosthetic limbs appeared in accounts from ancient Greece and Rome, right? So let's take a look. Q. These early limbs, the well, the first records of prosthetic limbs were obviously the early limbs, were made of wood, metal, or iron, and were both cumbersome and not very functional. So we're gonna have Q first. After Q, we're gonna say T. Why? Since then, as in since that time period of the early limbs, scientists have made great strides in developing prosthetic limbs or prosthetic limbs. Why? Because Q says they weren't very good, so T says, okay, we're gonna make them better. After T, he's going to compare them, right? Now we have the modern limbs. Here's the redesigned ones, the redeveloped ones, right? Modern limbs, often referred to as bionic limbs, are made from lighter and stronger materials like plastics and carbon fiber composites. You, obviously, um, another idea is, uh, well, let's look at R versus S. Thanks to these technological advances, prosthetic limbs are more functional versus the than ever before. That's a legacy sentence, right? Pretty much, you know, describing what's going to, you know, the, the modern limb, right? S gives another reason why it's good, why it's better. It fits meticulously to the patient's body and helps amputees carry on labs which are custom to before their energy. Um, that gives another advantage um, in addition to you. So it's going to be Q to U S R, not Q to U R S. All right, guys, moving on. Okay, Juhan, good job. Hey guys, this is paragraph two. Okay, I made a QSUDR. Who else? Come on, guys. Okay, let's go over paragraph two. Everybody knows the alphabet, but few know that it originated in the ancient civilizations of Sumer and Egypt, right? While Q, the, the cuneiform system developed by the Sumerians used a series of uh, wedge marked shades pressed into clay while the Egyptians used hieroglyphics. Well, okay, why is this first? Well, if you take a look, here it says what? It says that the alphabet originated in Sumer and Egypt. So Q gives that. It gives an example of that alphabet. It is that alphabet. It's not an example. It is that alphabet. Right? That's what Q is first. After Q, you can put S. But the Phoenicians de developed the first true alphabet. Because, so here's what we're trying to say. It's starting to say in the topic that a lot of people think that this. Um, 
but, you know, saying that some people think that, you know, Q on the cuneiform system is first, right? And then S comes after Q because S, like, not necessarily because the Phoenicians could be first, right? The Phoenicians had the first two alphabet, right? And then, um, which consists of pointing to letters and, and inevitably spread um, to other cultures along the trade route. Um, well, then, guess what? Um, U gives an example. For example, how is it, for example, in inevitably spread to other cultures along the trade route? The Greeks modified the Phoenician alphabet. What Phoenician alphabet are we talking about? The Phoenician alphabet that's developed in S. So two, three. After three, um, it's that we have T. Why? The Roman Empire took the Greek system. What's the Greek system? Well, they knew the referee, they introduced it. The Greeks modified the Phoenician alphabet. So T is four. And after that, um, the Roman Empire took the Greek system and developed it into the Latin alphabet. Why is our last? The English uh, adopted the Latin alphabet, the Latin alphabet from the Roman Empire. So, five. Got it, guys? Not so bad. Q, S, U, T, R. Paragraph three. Juhan says T U T R U Q S. Uh, let's go over it. Mazet thinks it's T R Q U S. The teddy bear was named after President Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president of the United States. Right? Interesting. Now, um, T is first. It pretty much introduces how Roosevelt came up with it. How how you know it was you know how it was drawn up and how was the name drawn up to be you know after Teddy Roosevelt. So one, T, while on a hunting expedition, Roosevelt came across a bear cub and refused to shoot it. Okay, so which, what continues on there with that idea? Well, let's take a look. R, a, con uh, a continuous watching post depicted the event as the president holding a cute little cuddly bear. Everyone sees that? So that's a pretty good, you know, continue on, uh, continuation from there. So that's where you have T and then R. Then, what references is this event? What represents the Washington this, uh, uh, the, the cartoon. Well, take a look. It says, you, Mars Mictum, saw the cartoon. What cartoon? The cartoon that the Washington Post made. So that's why you was going to be three. Now, and then what happened? He began selling teddy bears at his candy store in Brooklyn, New York. Well, what continues on with that idea? Q, right? Mission shows the bestseller and the teddy, boy, teddy bear fever sap the nation. Everyone sees that? Interesting. As his last original teddy bears now, now, suggests that it's a legacy in the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute for all to see. Everyone got it? Not bad. All right, guys, good job. Let's do four and five. Okay, S U Q T R for four. That's what Ahmed says. Everyone else, come on. Okay, Mazad says the same thing.
All right, UQSGR Paragraph 5, UQSGR, SUQTR, good job, good job. All right, guys. Good job. Good job, UPSDR. Good job. Good job. All right. I'll give you guys a break. Uh, it's going to be 2, 2 o'clock to 2.10. All right, guys, so I'll see you guys back from break at 2.10. We'll finish going over test 10. We'll talk about any other questions you may have in the other books if necessary. Um, and then we'll then I'll see you guys next week in the session. We'll, next week, no, tomorrow in the session will end.
Alright guys, 204. Just waiting on you guys to finish. Um uh Naeem, did you go for tutoring anywhere for the SHSAT? Yes, I did. I remember back in those days I used to have to study. I used to spend my summer. Did the same thing as you guys, did some studying, did some prep. Well, the test was always, you know, perceived to be difficult, right? Even back when I took it, um, I wouldn't say it's much easier than it was today. I don't think it really got that much harder. I think, um, I think the test has stayed pretty much the same in terms of difficulty. But what happens is that when you really want to go to Stuyvesant, you have to get above a 92 on the exam, and one has to, you know, make sure that they get above a 92, and it's, you know. You have to make sure you know how to do scan paragraphs, all the rules for logic reasoning, code games, and that kind of stuff. You know, that's like stuff that they don't teach at schools, right? So, therefore, yeah, I believe that the SHSAT is one of those things that you do have to do some intrinsic prep for. But I wouldn't say that the test was much easier back then when I took it versus now. What did you score on the SHSAT back then? Um, I don't entirely remember. I know it was above 600, maybe 6-something. Six I'm not entirely sure. I forget. But it was good enough for getting a sty.
All right, guys, it's 2.10, right? That means you guys should be coming back from break. Put your name, just like Juhan did, in the Q&A box when you are back. And then we are going to get started. We really don't have much longer in the session left. I believe that after we finish over, um, I'm just fixing the mic a little bit. After we finish over uh, um, test 10, I believe we are done with whatever we have to get through for today. If you have any other questions for any of the books, like let's say McGraw-Hill, page 253, question 18, we can do questions like those if you if necessary. But other than that, I feel like we are going to be done for the day after we finish question um, test 10 because of our, um, our patience pace or patience for, uh, for these kind of paragraphs. I believe that we don't have, we can, I can alter the schedule a little bit. And I might post a new schedule on your accounts tonight. Um, I think that maybe we can do the two volumes of the Scramble Paragraph books in one week, right? So I think maybe we can do, um, um, we can do uh, volume one Monday and Tuesday, and then maybe we can do volume two on Wednesday, right? And we can probably do volume two on Wednesday if you guys bring select questions, like maybe say paragraph three, test two, what's wrong with that? Paragraph eight, test I don't know, paragraph 5, test 6, what's wrong with that, right? So volume 2, we're probably going to do as select questions, right? As in, you know, I'm not going to wait for you guys to finish the paragraphs in front of me. I'm going to expect them finished. And then, you know, what's with this trend of caps lock? Just need my name. I just need. But yeah, I believe that, that that's a faster and more efficient, less boring, less tiresome, less, you know, whatever way to do it. So I think, whoa, what is but yeah, I think that's a better way, right? So I think that's one cool way to do it. All right, so I'm probably going to um, run the volume two session as in like, you know, as a question-based approach, as in like you guys ask, okay, this this question was difficult, this question was difficult, this question was difficult. You know, you guys have an answer key, so you're able to, you know, still, you know, be able to check your answers. But the idea is that I want you guys to be able to, you know, ask questions on the question, on the paragraphs that you really, really need help with. All right, guys, and that's that. Looks like we have a couple of the people that are going to watch. All right. Um, okay, just need name, uh, Mad Juhan. All right, waiting for everyone else, guys. Come on, come back. All right, guys, looks like people are coming back, so let's do this. Let's, let's finish up. We can maybe finish an hour earlier, right? Test 10, paragraph 1, let's do it.
All right, Mazad got T S Q R U. Paragraph one. Good job, Mazad. Who else got that? Who else didn't? Any complaints, comments, guys? Come on. Okay, TSQRU, good job, Sunita, good job, Juhan. Well, let's go over paragraph one. I think Javid got a different answer. All right, so the manatee is a gentle, aquatic creature um, that roams the Caribbean Sea. Oh, no, paragraph two, I believe. No, paragraph one. Uh, Javid, yeah, he got a different answer for that one. Let me just double check something. Yeah, he definitely got a different answer. Okay. So the manatee is a gentle aquatic creature that roams the Caribbean Sea and the coast of West Africa, right? Now, T is first. Um, it kind of starts with a myth, right? Unbelievably, these creatures, these creatures refer to what? The manatee were once confused for mermaids by sailors navigating these waters. What waters? The Caribbean Sea and the coast of West Africa. Everyone sees that, so that's what T is first, right? It links directly to the waters and directly um, links directly to the species, right? So T is first. Then after T, we have S. Although they look nothing like mermaids, again referencing that myth, the latter part of uh, uh, the first part of latter part of T is connected to the first part of S. Although they look nothing like mermaids, manatees too close to some of walruses. So now we're introducing this connection to walruses. Well, obviously we're going to talk about walruses now, right? So which answer is talked about walruses? Um, three, right? So three says, like walruses, manatees have large, round bodies and thick, wrinkled, gray skin. Yet their flippers and tail are distinct among underwater animals. So T S Q, good job. Now R, why is R after that? Use their flippers. Their flippers. What flippers? It says here. Yet their flippers and tail are distinct. So there we go. Manatees and flippers steer themselves to the water with their tails propel them at a slow pace. However, their large tails can pro uh, propel the manatees to 20 miles miles per hour when fried and everyone sees that. That, however, is perfect sense. Why? Because in R it says that they're propelled at a slow pace, and then U it says if need be, however, they can be propelled at a faster pace if they need to be. Q-U-R-S-T, paragraph 2, Ahmed, good job. Naima, good job. Mazad, good job. All right, let me know if you guys need paragraph 2, but if not, moving on, paragraph 3. Okay, Juan says paragraph two U Q R S T. Uh, close but not quite. You said U, the fortress. Uh, over here we don't know what fortress. Um, they're talking about Q must come before U because Q introduces a military fortress and then U connects that fortress. U references that fortress, right? The latter part of Q is connecting the first part of U. It should be Q U, not U Q. All right, good job, Juhan. All right, next. All right, guys, come on. Three, four, five.
three RTSQU, four RTSQU. Good job, Mazad. Good job, Naima. Good job, Sanjita. Good job, Naima. Good job, Jeff Ruhan. All right, good job. Four, Sanjita so says R, S, T, Q, U. Close, but not quite. Let's take a look at the slight mistake. Vasily Kandinsky is a Russian painter who is often credited as the founder of abstract art. R, again, this is a biography type scram paragraph, so we know at a young age, it's going to come first, right? After R, well, what does it say? Can this love music and paintings laid his groundwork for his artistic future? But he didn't actually study art, so it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a connection to the last part of R. See that? So, so that's why T is next. But he didn't actually study art until his thirties, after becoming disenchanted with his life as a law professor. And then, and then what? Oh, well, uh, he spent his last years. Obviously, it's gonna be um, death. Um, asked. Um, Kinesky felt constrained by his paintings he studied and began experimenting with less structured methods of art. Exactly. Um, T kind of dispels like an idea that's talked about in R, and then we go back to the paintings. This law professor is not relevant, right? The idea is that um, he didn't actually study art until his 30s after becoming disenchanted with life's law professor. It's kind of like clearing up like a misconception that could be construed in R. That's why it's R-T-S-Q-U, not R-S-T-Q-U. Right? Because take a look. In S, it says that he studied paintings already. Right? So it makes no sense to say, but he didn't actually study art. Right? So there's no sense for R for S to come before T. All right, good job, Kasneem. Good job, Ahmed. Good job, Juhan. Ahmed, Juhan, Mazad, good job. All right, let's do the elusive number five. Hold on, guys. I'm getting a call from the tutorial. Just give me a second. Yeah, what's up? No. What's the name? Who? Persona? Well, we have an online session today where everyone is, which is what I'm doing right now, but we don't have a boot camp today. But no, we, we, we don't have a boot camp. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a boot camp for Scrap Paragraph last week, but the boot camp, I didn't schedule, I didn't, I, I didn't schedule the boot camp for, I didn't schedule the second boot camp yet. All right. All right, bye. All right, bye. Everyone. bye. Right. Okay. All right, guys. Apparently, Frizana didn't get the memo. Um. All right. Paragraph five. What do we see? RTSQ. RTSQ. Okay, that's interesting. Is this the last test we're doing? Alright, uh, RTSEQ, RTSEQ, good job, good job. Alright, this is the last test we're doing, right? 
All right, guys, this is the last test we're doing. Looks like we're going to end about an hour earlier today. If you have any questions about any of the scram paragraphs that we did today, feel free to ask them now. Right? If you have, um, I am going to schedule your boot camp, your scramble. Those of you who are in the scram paragraphs boot camp, I am going to schedule that today. Um, I'll post up a time and date on your accounts. Right? Um, I'm not entirely. Um, don't assume that there's any scram paragraph boot camp as of yet. I just have to schedule the time and date. Got it, guys. Um, anything else, you can feel free to email me, naeem at rqmtutorial.com if you have any questions. Uh, what else is there to say? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 11 in the morning. We're ending about an hour early today, I believe. No, actually, no, we're ending about 30 minutes early today, right? So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, be, be prepared to do test 11 to test 20. Try to have them ready so we can work through them quicker and really ask questions about certain links between certain sentences and whatever instead of you know waiting for you guys to just get the answers. Got it, guys? This is the last test we're doing, so at this time I'm going to end the session. Um, if you have any questions after this, feel free to use the live chat feature or feel free to email me at naeem at rqmtutorial.com. Got it? If you have any questions, um, feel free to let me know now. Paragraph 5, R -Q -R -U -Q -S -T. I'm just going to go over that really quickly for Java. I don't, I don't think he got the one correct. So let's take a look. Uh, the ma ma the matriarchal or stacking doll is emblematic of Russia's rich culture, right? Uh, let's, let's take a look. Um, well, obviously, we can talk about etymology first, and this is a common trend on the SHSST. We're right? talking about the etymology of words, Latin roots, whatever root it comes from. So over here, matriarchal comes from the Latin root word mater, meaning mother. After R, we can talk about what? Um, well, there's a couple ways we can go over here, right? Uh, well, in R, it says it uh, means mother. Now, now let's try to create like a link, or let's try to create um, connections. Um, well, let's take a look. We know what um, uh, meaning mother. Well, the mother doll. Sometimes these figures are identical. The most valid dolls. Okay, so but these are more than just dolls. Okay, so we we have dolls, right? Um, the mother doll puts apart to reveal um, slightly smaller dolls as each figure is opened. And then the most valued dollars tell stories. Okay, so we have to create links, right? And to create links, um, well, well, we can create a couple links here, right? The first thing is that it says sometimes these figures are identical, but usually there's a slight difference in the coloring of the costumes, right? Uh, is there any link to that? Let's try to create a couple links here. Uh, well, but these are more than just dolls. Um, is many over a century old and considered a highly valuable work of uh, works of art. So we have Matryoshka, first we have mother, then the mother doll refers to the mother over here, right? So Matryoshka, the mother doll, um, pulls apart to reveal increasingly smaller dolls as each one is opened. So that's why T is directly after R. After T, we can have S. Sometimes these figures are identical, right? As in here, it says increasingly smaller dolls, but sometimes um, they're identical. But usually there's a slight difference in the coloring of the costumes. Not in size identical, but in like maybe looks. Right? And that's what S is then. But these are most more than just dolls, and increasingly over a century old and considered highly valued works of art. So we know that S says, hey, there could be just a slight difference in cleaning up the costumes, and that's really the dolls, but they're more than just dolls, right? And that's really what you was trying to say. And then Q says the most valued. So after we talk about that these are considered highly valuable works of art, we're talking about the most valued, right? Tell a story whose roots are in the Russian fairy tales. Got it, guys? R T S U Q. Um, bye. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow, uh, 11 o'clock, guys. All right. Have a good one.